this is the part of the, of the event that I think we've all been looking for, uh, forward to, and, and to have Dave Barger, the Chief Executive Officer of JetBlue Airways with us today is indeed a pleasure. Now, um, a little bit about Dave. He is one of the founding members, leadership team members at JetBlue. He was there with the, the launch of the airline. Uh, and the airline uh, was launched with, with pretty aggressive goals uh, to become a low-cost, customer service-oriented airline in New York City. Their objective was to bring humanity back to air travel. And I can tell you as an American flying domestically in America, it was really exciting to have JetBlue enter the service, to challenge the industry as a whole. Since then, the airline um, has grown. It's grown significantly, moving some 30 million passengers a year. JetBlue now flies to destinations in North, Central, and South America and the Caribbean. A total of 85 destinations as of this week, if I'm correct. JetBlue is also known for its innovation. Uh, its award-winning customer service, its competitive fares, actually complimentary snacks, uh, and free and innovative uh, onboard entertainment systems. Now, a little bit about Dave. He grew up in aviation, like so many of us. His father was an airline pilot for 37 years. Early in his career, he obviously got the bug. He joined one of the, the first airlines that, that emerged out of the USD regulation in 1978, which was New York Air. He later joined Continental Airlines and held several senior roles there. He is recognized not just as a really great guy, but he's also recognized in, in aviation as a, as a real leader. He's on the Board of Governors for IATA, for A4A, and for the Flight Safety Foundation. He's also passionate about community, and he has made service a cornerstone to the JetBlue culture. Dave served as chairman of Pencil, uh, a New York public education organization, and as member of the board of directors of the New York Regis Restoration Project, which is a really cool nonprofit organization dedicated to transforming open spaces in underserved communities to create a greener, more sustainable environment. He's also a member of the Board of Directors of the USO Metropolitan New York. Please join me in welcoming Dave Barger. Thank you. Thank you very much. How's everybody? Marlon, thank you so much for the, uh, the uh, kind comments. I appreciate that. I'll tighten the remarks, right, because we're running a little bit tardy. Probably an air traffic control delay, I'm not sure. That's what I'm thinking. By the way, the, um, uh, Ray also mentioned the 100 euros that you paid me, um, that you can't expense it, okay? Just so you know, right? I would never and I think that this room is probably more interested, right, uh, John, in, in uh, Ireland versus Italy, right? And, and Brian O'Driscoll, as opposed to March Madness, right? So you're so American, Marlon, right? <laughs> Okay, just having a little fun with you, because I now have the podium. It's a, uh, I'm absolutely uh, delighted and honored uh, to be in uh, Dublin, to be in Ireland. It's a, uh, I mean, who doesn't like a location where there's uh, fly fishing and golf courses and uh, horse racing, right, and pubs, and I mean, this is such a, a great place uh, to, to visit. And uh, really, really delighted to, thank you, Christoph, to come across on Helen, the 104, right, from JFK into uh, Dublin on the 104 uh, with Aer Lingus service. But uh, it's, it's just really nice to be invited to see all of you out here today, um, here at the Westin in such a lovely room to talk about uh, a crazy business, aviation. And uh, by the way, maybe if there's time for a couple questions at the end, that would be fine. There's, uh, Brian, can we also circulate the bowl one more time? There's uh, some nice giveaways. If I recognize, of course, Marlon, thank you, and, 
and Ray with uh, AWAS. It's uh, uh, John, thank you as well for uh, all the support over the years. Uh, when I think to whether it's uh, RBS and into Embraer today and, and the Wings Club and just out in the industry like with, with, with Greg, right now can we negotiate the price on 40? 40 E2s, okay, with motors, with motors, right? <laughs> uh, delivery is 2019, 2020, somewhere in that time frame, and, and can, we, can we just negotiate the price right now publicly? Are you willing to do that? Sure. Mr. Slattery, are you willing to do that? Sure. And, and what does the first number start with? Would you like a microphone? <laughs> What's that? A four, I got gotcha. you. Wow, inflation. It's amazing what happens right over time. Absolutely amazing. It's uh, John, you're such a, such a good friend. Thank you uh, for making uh, really the, the idea of the European chapter of the Wings Club. And you can see our dates going back to uh, it, its founding as well. Uh, Christoph, if I can also just on behalf of the JetBlue team. JetBlue, raise your hands, those of you from uh, JetBlue that made the trek over uh, as well. Visit. Thank you. A round of applause, right? It's, thank you on behalf of 15,000 strong. Uh, but uh, uh, warmly, Christoph, to the Aer Lingus team that's here as well in a, a very warm room, uh, this relationship that goes back to uh, 2008 and uh, certainly uh, seeing you speak uh, last year as well, it's just, uh, it, it's always delightful uh, to spend time with you in uh, Dublin as well, so thank you. And again, thank you for uh, joining today. Uh, thoughts that I'm going to share with you are, are uh, I think the theme is really about the 100-year anniversary uh, of commercial flight. And um, the rather interesting, in the United States, we just celebrated the 100-year anniversary of commercial flight. Tony Janis, uh, January 1st, 1914, uh, flying from St. Petersburg, Florida to Tampa. And um, so now as we sit here and celebrate 100 years, you probably aren't surprised in the United States to know that over those 100 years, uh, the industry has not been profitable when you aggregate 100 years of flying in the United States. And, and you probably kind of say, like, why are we doing this stupid thing, right, called uh, uh, aviation in the United States. And it's, uh, in all that said, whether it's uh, at JetBlue or Continental or New York Air or my dad uh, flying at United Airlines, it's just a uh, love the business. And it's fun to be contrarian as we think about how we can do things differently. Um, interesting to note, too, that uh, Tony Janis, when the anniversary was celebrated just a couple of months ago, the, um, the aircraft that was uh, flown took a mechanical delay as part of the reenactment, so really kind of like nothing's changed, right, over a <laughs> hundred years. Okay, so I, I know there's much greater uh, reliability out there in the fleet today. But can you imagine Tony Janus in the United States who's uh, heavier than air, 11 years after the Wright brothers, uh, literally trying to make a buck in this business, flying short haul, thinking about things like um, Wi-Fi at altitude. And as we came across uh, yesterday, and the, and the Wi-Fi worked quite well aboard uh, the Aer Lingus 330, and how few intercontinental airplanes have Wi-Fi into the cabin. I don't think Tony Janus was thinking about that, or was he thinking about things such as lie flat seats uh, as you fly longer haul, or how do you, what do you do with all those carry-on bags? Uh, I don't think Tony Janus was thinking about that 100 years ago. I, I certainly don't think that he was thinking about uh, cutting the ribbon on a Dublin to San Francisco inaugural, a flight that, that long, that far away, that will take place here on April 2nd. And so it's, it's amazing when we think about South Florida here in the United States, when we think about aviation, of course, the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk, and, but then we think about all the, just the rich history here as well. And whether it's Aer Lingus, certainly Ryanair, it's, uh, uh, you think about uh, companies such as AWAS and all the leasing companies uh, that made their home, have made their home here in Ireland, in Dublin. Wow, we even think about, uh, dare I, dare I uh, uh, talk at all about Norwegian, right? And, and the newest uh, airline that's uh, based here as well. And isn't that an interesting model, Robert, right, to say the least? Uh, as we look afar from, is this uh, the next Laker kind of approach, the low cost, it's really interesting. And I don't think at all that uh, uh, Mr. Janus was thinking about uh, those things 100 years ago. I think uh, also here, just uh, the new premium seating that we're putting into our aircraft, 
Thompson Aero City in, uh, up in Belfast, uh, Issa Durham, our Chief Information Officer, working with companies like Datalex uh, right here in Dublin and our new retail environment. It's, um, it's amazing how much connectivity we do have as a New York-based company based in the United States and what we're, what we're doing with companies uh, who are based in Ireland, based in Dublin, and of course, uh, none more important as we think about uh, certainly uh, Aer Lingus and that relationship that's now close to six years in place. Well, let's get you inside the, the United States just a little bit more. First of all, who's flown JetBlue? Raise your hand. Just curious. Who's? Okay, if we've lost your bag, keep your hand up. Keep your hand up so we can take care of you afterwards. Not too many of you. So you, you get inside this industry in, in the United States. And since we started flying, and people will talk about, uh, well, there's been external events, and sure, uh, terrorist attacks, and oil at 147, and global recession, and you think about all the external events, and what's the next external, external event? Who knows? Um, but as we've seen most recently, so last, uh, last year, we now have the consummation, with bankruptcy. We use bankruptcy a lot in the United States. I don't. Uh, you know, I wish we didn't uh, use it as much as, uh, it's hard to compete against these guys that are operating in bankruptcy, right? I mean, and by the way, some of you companies who help bail them out as well as a result of their reorganization, and I'll keep you uh, nameless, but it's, uh, it's hard to compete against bankruptcy, and so maybe we're finally done for a while. So now the largest airline in the world, uh, based on ASMs, American Airlines, US Airways, gone and they replaced the previous largest airline in the world, uh, United Airlines. Uh, I cut my uh, teeth at New York Air, which became part of Continental, so uh, United, uh, grew up in a United family, and they outpaced uh, uh, what was uh, the previously largest airline in the world with Delta, who took out Northwest and all the brands that are in there. And then you start to get inside of uh, Southwest, the largest airline in the United States, carrying customers uh, with their acquisition of AirTran, and uh, it, it's, it, it's absolutely, it's frightening with what's happened in the United States as, as we have been hatching our company. And certainly here uh, across Europe, there's been uh, uh, changes to the landscape and Christoph and I were chatting earlier, maybe more changes will take place, but maybe not as much change as we think, right? Just because of uh, what has happened with consolidation, what has happened with failure, uh, what has happened with things like alliances and joint ventures, and, and they're taking a, a little bit different look to it from the standpoint of creating a business, uh, unlike what uh, Mr. Janus was, what he saw when he first started to fly, but a business that can return uh, an investment uh, to our shareholders. I mean, it's not asking for a whole lot to really cover our cost of capital. And, and when I think about uh, uh, the United States, it's, here's the latest numbers, by the way. Um, when you think back to 2010, the industry, this is net. We made uh, $3.18 per employment in 2010. By the way, in 2011, we made uh, 77 cents per employment in the United States. These are U.S. carriers. In 2012, uh, the number was 37 cents per employment. And, but here's rather interesting. I was in Washington, D.C. yesterday. Well, guess what? Things are changing because the industry made uh, $16 per employment. 37 cents in 2012, $16 per employment in uh, 2013. Uh, our number, by the way, was about $5.50 per employment when we think about uh, our $168 million net profit over the course of the year. But it does talk about how hard it is to compete against some of these, just these behemoths who are legally, right, declaring bankruptcy and then merging their entities and all the words that go with it, right? Whether it's furlough or pay cuts or aircraft back to um, uh, manufacturers or leasing companies or, or, or gates back to the community or whatever the case might be. But it's pretty interesting to see that $16 per employment in the United States, that number was just made public yesterday, pretty significant to say the least. But here's, isn't this interesting? Um, $17 per employment was the capital expenditures in the United States for carriers who are attempting to refleet, or they're investing in terminals, or things like uh, broadband Wi-Fi, or whatever the case might be. Uh, so clearly, we had an awful lot of catch-up uh, that was taking place. 
in the United States, and I think that certainly that we've seen this. So let me get inside of JetBlue, and we talk about what we're attempting to do and continuing to be contrarian. And it's when you think about the this landscape, it's we have the low cost, the super low cost carriers, and uh, of course you have them with uh, the Ryanair's of the world, and and. Uh, and other carriers, but in the states we have uh, the Allegiant model, we have Spirit. We're not one of those guys. We're not one of the network uh, legacy guys where you're, we're going to take you any place uh, from uh, Shanghai to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Uh, that's where those guys will take you, those ro road warriors. We're doing things differently. And with our fleet of Airbus A320s, 321s, by the way, John, as you know, very helpful with that portfolio as well as with the 190 fleet. and. Uh, it's nice, we have firm aircraft out into the 2022, 2023 timeframe, doing things with a comfortable cabin. We're not about nickel and diamond, we're about trying to really create this value proposition where the TV is part of the package. Uh, the satellite radio is part of the package. The Wi-Fi is part of the package. And, and I think you, know, you can put all of that together, but what's most important is 15,000 crew members, all non-union by the way, Although, let me be uh, transparent, we right now have another, um, another uh, charge by the uh, Airline Pilots Association in terms of unionization uh, of our company. By the way, this isn't an anti-labor uh, comment. We're very pro-labor. We've created 15,000 jobs. I grew up in Detroit. You look at the auto industry, and uh, you look at the, uh, uh, the manufacturers and the UAW. It's a, uh, you can work within a unionized environment. It's just that for 15 years, we haven't had to have that in place, and I just don't think that you have to pay somebody to speak on your behalf uh, within the JetBlue model. It's not a comment about uh, unionization at all, but it's uh, a, certainly a threat uh, that we've seen. And, and, and so as we look at where we're at with our portfolio, 195 aircraft attempting to fly against these, these, these airlines that are big models across the world, and of course the super discounters, we have to continue to evolve. And so things like, it's just hard to believe that uh, we're now thinking about, uh, by the way, these four big airlines, the three big guys, and then Southwest and AirTran, that's 83% of all the ASMs in the United States. And so this consolidation, we're only a 5% player, and so you have to be irreverent. You have to be doing things differently. You have to not be afraid of making change, and this is exactly what's happening uh, for us. And so. Things like the A321 with all lie flat seating, uh, compliments of uh, Thompson Aero seating from Kennedy to Los Angeles and San Francisco, starting here in the uh, June 15 timeframe. You bet. Our wholly owned subsidiary, Live TV, working with Viasat in Carlsbad, California, about full broadband Wi Fi into the aircraft. You bet. You've got to make those changes. Things like when we started flying. Uh, in uh, North America, venturing into Central America, South America, the Caribbean, you bet. And people have said, well, what about things like uh, wide-body aircraft? I say, why not? I mean, my gosh, when I look at what has got us here, it won't get us there. And so the ability to reach some of these markets that we're seeing that make perfect sense to us, why not? And I think that as I look at our 15 years now, we just had a birthday in February, 15 years into this landscape in the United States of just incredible uh, challenge, 100 years with Tony Janus, this recent uh, bankruptcy and M&A activity. You have to be uh, not afraid uh, to venture into some pretty challenging areas. And uh, I'm very, very excited as we now move into our 15th year. And I'll, I'll just share this one fact with you. Fortune 500 companies in the United States, from scratch to one of the Fortune 500 companies in the United States, largest 500 companies based on revenue in 14 years. And doing it without mergers, without acquisitions, doing it the good old fashioned way, the organic way, from the standpoint of one aircraft at a time, one person at a time. And a, a, a couple themes that I'll just share with you, uh, that uh, as I bring us to maybe some uh, dialogue on the Aer Lingus uh, relationship. So themes that we talk about in the United States, it's, uh, I'm not here to preach uh, our need for national airline policy, but do we really need to be taxed more than alcohol and tobacco on an airplane ticket? 20% of the ticket in the United States is alcohol and tobacco. Um, 
do we really need to have the regulatory burden, I'm not talking about FAA oversight, but the regulatory burden of attempting to shoot or take advantage of RNAV and RNP in the aircraft, why does it take five years to uh, approve an environmental review process to allow us to gain access to an, into an airport like Kennedy uh, in a more seamless manner? The airplane can do it. Our pilots can do it. The equipment allows us to do it. When we sit here in the United States and we think about what's happening in the Middle East, and uh, by the way, partners of ours as well, all three of the Gulf Three. We, Emirates will be partnering with uh, Emirates on their newest service into Boston uh, starting next uh, Monday as we open up Detroit, my home, because of the large Arab Middle Eastern population. So in the United States, we think about what's happening with Emirates or Etihad, obviously an investor in Aer Lingus, uh, Qatar, of course, Turkish. My gosh, wouldn't it be nice if we had a government that might say, hey, listen, how do we enable aviation in the United States to help drive more economic development like what we're seeing across uh, other parts of the world, such as in the Gulf. What about foreign ownership? Our largest investor is the Lufthansa Group. 17% of our shares are owned by Lufthansa. Growing up in Detroit, watching the auto industry now with finally really nice cars being built in Detroit, it's because I'm convinced Korean, Japanese, German auto manufacturers are building great stuff in the southern tier of the United States. Why are we being held back in the United States with things like foreign ownership? I mean, this is just crazy kind of stuff. And, and so, you know, all that said, I remain incredibly, incredibly uh, optimistic and bullish with our, our uh, chance to not just sur continue to survive, but to thrive. And not just for the next year, but the next 15 years. And I have to tell you, it's because we're doing things differently with airlines like Aer Lingus. And before I close and get to some Q&A, uh, which I think we'll have a couple, a couple minutes for Q&A, when you look at the alliance world and you look at the joint venture world, and then you say, well, why can't we just have like models partner with your assets and with our assets? And when you now see this near seamless experience, and dare I say seamless experience, across our Terminal 5 at JFK, which, with flights from Dublin, from Shannon, across Boston, right, and other markets as well, uh, working with your team, hundreds of customers now, your aircraft in our building, uh, the ability to sell, we were talking about on the airplane last night, customers from Buffalo to Kennedy or Boston, into Dublin, into Barcelona, as just another avenue uh, to make their trip. I mean, it's, it's these kind of partnerships, it's these kind of decisions that make all the difference in the world. Because if we, if we sit here and if we continue to chart the path of the guys and the gals in the United States where we just saw so much failure over the first 100 years, and now this recent uh, challenge of how do you compete against these largest airlines in the world, we have to do things uh, considerably different. If I may, um, Christoph, we have a gift on behalf of the JetBlue team, and I'm sure that the Wings Club here, this chapter won't mind if I, I use this stage just to present you with, uh, if you can come to the podium please, Christoph. Like Tony Janis, you needed a leather jacket, right, to fly across in those early days, and, and you are truly uh, pioneering and really running uh, in a contrarian fashion, doing things differently with Aer Lingus. And I can only imagine, right, when I look at the history of your company, but I can't tell you how much we appreciate the partnership and, most importantly, the friendship. On behalf of our team, we have a pilot's jacket for you. With all due respect, Robert, don't give him the keys to the aircraft, okay? On behalf of JetBlue to you, Christoph, thanks so much for your ongoing support. That seems to be a very polite way to suggest that there is some heavy weather ahead. <laughs> I originally I wanted to um, I wanted to intercept Dave on his way to the to the men's room, but I can do it here now. Um, yes, I think our 
our relationship between the two companies is very expiring every day and it gives us a lot of uh, pleasant joy but our customer appreciate that and um, therefore I was prepared to make you an honorary member oh, wow. of the Alingus team today. <laughs> oh nice. <laughs> See? Oh. And of course oh, nice. that comes always with two obligations. Yes. The, the first obligation is to treat our customers well <laughs> and I believe uh, you have delivered on that without any doubt. The second obligation is um, to be nice to our employees and since I hear from my pilots that you spend more time in the cockpit when you take the 104 <laughs> uh, than in your seat also topic. So we will waive your, we will waive your you. trial period and if you allow me to pierce you now. <laughs> well, you have now acquired the only right coming with the shamrock and that is to go on strike oh. <laughs> 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 and, <laughs> you see uh, all, all our executive have that um, we usually go on strike on a Friday afternoon but <laughs> <laughs> since nobody cares take it for the fashionable value of it. I love thank it. you very we'll much. Do. Christoph, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Christoph. I can, uh, I can honestly tell you we didn't prepare that at all. He didn't know I had a jacket for him or that I have an ID as well, right? So thank you. And I'll use this uh, to go uh, into the bar, into the pub later today. Christoph, thank you. Let me just close by saying and a couple questions before uh, over coffee before we give away the, uh, the raffles. The, the Wings Club is just so important to me and uh, having the opportunity to address uh, you in, in Dublin. Again, Marlon, thank you. And uh, with the chapter, uh, Greg, very much involved with the chapter. John, your idea with the chapter. The relationships that we have here uh, between our company and of course Dublin, but the aviation community across Ireland, uh, thank you. And uh, I, I do have a prediction on the uh, rugby uh, match tomorrow. It's uh, Ireland 30, Italy 7 will be the final score. What do you think? Again, on behalf of uh, my JetBlue colleagues, 15,000 strong, thank you for turning out and just, a, just great numbers on this Friday in your uh, beautiful city and your beautiful country. Good luck in the rugby match tomorrow as well. Thank you. So we, we have a, a plaque that I'd like to present to Dave uh, from the Wings Club. Um, it says, in grateful appreciation of your presentation at the Aviation Leaders Series of the Wings Club, Dublin, March 2014. Thank Dave. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.